the eraser in 3D Coat is very much like what you have in Photoshop here in the tool panel. You can adjust the eraser transparency level as well as choose different brush alphas to work with as you're racing. So if I go back over to 3D Coat, you can use any one of these draw modes here in conjunction with different brush alphas. You could also use a stencil to erase through. So let me choose reset, maybe rotate, scale it. I'm going to select the right layer, come up to my layer channels and choose which ones I want to work with. In this case, just color and check my eraser transparency. 100% means it's going to erase 100% of the pixels that I'm brushing. Okay, so I undo. And as I reduce my numeric value, then the amount of pixels it erases is going to be much fewer. You'll notice as you continue brushing across the same area, then your eraser is going to be additive. So it's going to continue erasing 42% of what's left. So let me undo a few times. Let's turn off color and look at working with depth. And I'll close that stencil. So yeah, let's bring up our texture editor now. I'm going to switch to the normal map. And I'll zoom into this area where we're working. Then choose the layer that I have normal information on. And once more, if I have eraser transparency of 100, then right off the bat, you can see it's erasing all the normal information, but it's not deleting the pixels of the normal map itself. So let me undo. If I bring that value down, it's just degrading the pixel information by that value, and once more, it's additive. So I can just continue brushing, and it's going to continue removing more and more depth information. So let me undo a few times here. Now let me just mention that if you wanted to do this in a more non-destructive fashion where you wanted to get this information back later on, then obviously working with the eraser is not the way to go. You can do a very similar task with the magnification and reduction brush that we looked at in the previous video. With the reduction brush, obviously it's going to reduce the depth level, but it's not going to erase your information. So let's go back to the eraser. And I'm going to turn off my depth channel and turn on specularity and then come over here and switch to my specular map. And I want to mention that when you're working with specularity in 3D coats, you don't have to be concerned with picking a specific color to paint specularity with. And what I mean by that is if you're in Photoshop, in order to paint or create higher specularity values, then you want a brighter color to paint with. If you want lower specularity values, obviously you want a darker color. Well, you don't have to worry about color shades in 3D Coat. You simply tell it what numeric value you want, and 3D Coat takes care of the rest. So let me switch to my specularity layer here. And let me quickly show here with the paintbrush, if I want a high degree of specularity on a part of my map, then I want to increase the number of my specularity intensity. So as I paint, 100% you can see it's a bright white. Now if I reduce that down to zero you'll notice 3D Coat is handling all the color for you so you don't have to continually go over to your, you know, your color palette to find the right color. So let me undo a few times. With the eraser 3D Coat is going to take away specularity information. So uh, let me adjust my transparency level a little bit. Let's go to 100%. And my brush, you can see, it's all black. Let's bring it down to about 50% or so. Okay. And then about 10. 
So that is a quick look at working with the eraser in 3D Coats. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.